Is that good? Off you go, yep. Yeah, okay. So yeah, thank you um, so much for having me. I'm delighted to be a part of this conversation. Um, so I'm in the School of Simulation and Visualization at the Glasgow School of Art. And I'm in my first year of my project, which is called The Digital Otherworld. And I want to start with this map, which shows the tidal island of Balashir in the Western Isles of Scotland. The name translates as Eastern Village, but it is situated on the west coast of North Uist. So the name seems inappropriate given its location, but could it give us clues to hidden information? And this quote tells us why. So situated west from the shores of North Uist, the remains of the buildings are visible under a clear sky and low tide. They are said to have been the dwellings of the people who inhabited the Mackers now under the sea. It is interesting and curious to find submerged sites over the now wide and open sea still called by their place names. A skier and Hlion, the barrier rock, the site of a floodgate and others. Along the western margin of these islands, Atlantic waves roll over the remains of dikes, duns, swellings, kilns, and churches, which can still be recognised as such, together with undeterminable masonry and old burial grounds. And another keeper of this kind, oh, sorry, wait, I want to go back. Because <laughs> um, what I want to say here is that um, so there's two, what it's saying is there's two townships which are now completely submerged by the Atlantic. They're called Husvos and Balashir, which is the west village to Balashir's east. And the point I'm trying to make here is that maps hold data that can give us an insight into vestiges of the past and clues to data that might not be visible on first glance. And another keeper of this kind of information is in oral tradition and folklore. For example, this recording held in the Tobarun Dalkish archive of audio heritage. So I'm just gonna play a little clip of that. Um, let me know if you can't hear it. <laughs> Um, so he was telling us that there was a village called Balashir indeed, but it's now under the sea and he never saw it himself, but he's telling us who told him about it. And these islands and the folklore surrounding them are full of culturally rich information, which is passed from generation to generation. However, there are certain parallels with the incoming tide threatening the landscape as it, as it is known now, with the rise of digital threatening oral culture and heritage. And oral tradition is a vast and culturally rich resource in Scotland. In his introduction to the Gallic other world, Black writes that there is not one but three Gallic other worlds, each of which is separately populated by the fairies, spirits and witches. Though very different in themselves, all three other worlds attempt to probe the mysteries of time and space. And spatiality is key here, not only physically in terms of the context of the landscape, but also carving out space within the digital realm. With digital being an ever presence in modern lives, I'd like to reconnect the two and I'd like to do it through the medium that is both very physical and very visual, which is mapping. And maps are a great way of visualizing data. It's interesting to compare different maps. For example, if you compare a road map of Glasgow with an Aboriginal map, both are describing the landscape and how we as humans move through it, but they are represented very differently visually. And there are many hundreds of layers of information that may be included on a map or left off depending on its use. 
And sometimes a lot of this content is invisible to people who are passing through and is only visible to those who live and work there. I want to play on this and use augmented reality to overlay data on the physical landscape that tells us more about the people of the past through the people that live there now. This is an artwork by Derek Lerner. And it's an example of how digital sculpture and drawing can be placed in situ and interacted with. And the digital realm in this context can be thought of as a medium for revealing the hid hidden layers of information and meaning in the landscape. And another way of storytelling in immersives is using animation. More or less by Leslie Keane is an example of how it can be layered over a real world context. The film is set in Pollock Park, which is the location of the Borough Collection Art Gallery. In the words of the artist, the spirits of the works in the collection escape by day to play in the park and are gathered up each evening to return to the objects which they are supposed to inhabit making it a play on the meaning of the word animate. And another medium that I'm going to be drawing on is um, theatre and set design. I think it's a good way of creating atmosphere and content for a digital space. As set design are artworks that are layered and create 3D spaces that can be moved through and that shift and change for storytelling purposes. The challenge for digital space is making it look good from all angles. And I have, so I have said that my research project transcends the boundaries of the physical and the digital. And in this sense, I see the digital other world as being a map that can only be explored if you're out in the physical landscape. And one of my initial experiments is building an app that notifies you when you're in the vicinity of the location of an other world reference. I like the idea of being out and about and exploring the landscape and suddenly you get a notification to your phone letting you know about a story that arose in that location. Trying to evoke, for example, a visit from a fairy here. Uh, this is something that, <clears throat> sorry, this is something that usually appears to you you don't seek it for yourself. And these are some very quick experiments I wanted to do with technology that is widely available and relatively easy to use. The first is just with a free AR app that comes included with Android phones these days. Something that is accessible and easy to use and allows you to write and draw in 3D in the landscape. And the second is an experiment with layered animation frames placed in context. So whether the storytelling is done through abstract methods or literally written on the landscape, the most important part is that the stories are told by the people in ways they wish to tell them. And with the specific focus of mapping folklore to the landscape, my challenges as I see them now are these. Can these technologies enable more people to meaningfully engage with and reconsider their experience of folklore in the landscape? In the context of heritage visualization, is there a way of working with the technologies that is inclusive and beneficial to all? And can the use of digital technologies in this context enable more ethical tourist economies and sustain creative economies locally? And I'd really like to finish with this quote um, it just says, fairies are mythical mediators between man and nature in its wild state. They are avatars of the other world, of all that is mysterious about our existence. We do not have to believe in the culture specific form that they take to understand the process of negotiation between man and nature. And what can go wrong when the negotiation goes wrong? Global warming, flooding, loss of biodiversity. There's nothing fanciful about that debate. So my project explores the boundaries of the human and the other, it explores the ways in which non-digital forms of heritage can be creatively rendered using digital technologies. But I will also critically reflect on the use of digital technologies in not only becoming a new access point for folklore, 
but assess its ability to support the potential genesis of new folklore and encourage its use in support of local economies. Thank you so much for listening. Um, I'd be interested if anyone has any questions or comments, share them in the Q&A.